we are alone. Physically speaking, anything that can happen in one time or place can happen in another. All of science is based on this notion of reproducibility, given the same starting conditions, the same outcomes result. If the universe is infinite, which by all indications it seems to be, then the possibility of life combined with an infinite extent of space statistically guarantees other life, including intelligent life, exists out there. But this doesn't tell us how near or far that life is. If intelligent life is so rare that it occurs on less than one star in 10 to the power of 22, then we might be the only example in the observable universe. The vast distances implied by being the only intelligence in the observable universe would, for all practical purposes, mean we are alone, even if infinite other intelligences exist across our infinite universe. Life is rare. The most obvious answer to Fermi's paradox is simply that he got his math wrong. He may have overlooked some great filter, something difficult to have, obtain, or pass, but is necessary for life. For example, it might be important, but also rare to have a large moon and a large planet like Jupiter nearby. Both help clear away and deflect debris in the inner solar system. This debris might otherwise plague Earth with perpetual planetary bombardment from asteroids, comets, and meteors. This idea is known as the rare Earth hypothesis. It is a proposed solution to the Fermi paradox. Other proposed rare coincidences relate to the fact that Earth has a fairly active interior. This interior both creates a protective magnetic shield and also makes for geothermal vents. These vents may have played a key role in kick-starting life. The hypothesized collision with Theo would be a relatively uncommon event. But it gave Earth her large moon. The moon creates tides, which create tide pools. Tide pools also might have played a role in the appearance of life, they provided a place for the chemical stuff of life to mix together and concentrate. The theory remains hotly debated. The counter-evidence for life being difficult is the speed at which it arose on Earth. It appeared relatively quickly, within a fraction of a billion years after Earth's oceans formed. The other argument is statistical. For Earth to be the only planet with life, life would have to be incredibly rare. It is conceivable that with a billion-year head start, an intelligent civilization 100 million light-years away could spread to us using von Neumann probes. For Earth to be the only planet with life for 100 million light-years, life would have to occur on less than one out of every 200 trillion star systems. More data will be required to settle the question of the rare Earth hypothesis. It may come within a few years, when results of surveys for biogenic gases are completed by the James Webb Telescope. It could also be disproved if conclusive evidence is found indicating primitive life on Mars, as suggested by chemical analysis of the bacteria-like shapes on the Allen Hills 77005 Martian meteorite. Intelligence is rare. According to this solution to the paradox, life may be common, but evolving complex intelligent life is not. This would explain why we haven't heard radio signals or found alien megastructures. Intelligence is a key factor in the success and survival of the human species. But for most of the millions of other species on this planet, it is not. Might we be biased in assuming evolution favors intelligence? Moreover, Perhaps there are barriers to evolving through the various required stages. It may be that evolving multicellular life is difficult, after all it took several billion years to get from single-celled organisms to animals. While evolving intelligence is not inevitable, there are reasons to believe intelligence is favored. The evidence for this is convergent evolution, independent branches of the evolutionary tree separately evolved intelligence. Outside of our own primate lineage there are, dolphins and elephants among mammals, grey parrots and crows among the birds, even the mollusks of octopuses and cuttlefish. Greater intelligence provides advantages to those species who evolve it. It enables predators to outthink their prey, 
and social creatures to outthink each other. Given that intelligence has arisen multiple times from different lines of evolution, it is reasonable to suspect that it will arise so long as life can bridge the gap from single-celled life to multicellular life. We are the first. Perhaps neither life, nor intelligence is inherently rare, we just happen to be the first. This theory is in line with the understanding that life should be common, and intelligence should be favored by evolution. It also explains the complete lack of observational evidence for other alien civilizations. However, the view that we are first runs counter to two facets of our cosmological understanding. The first is that life could have arisen billions of years earlier than it did on Earth. Rocky planets formed in the first billion years after the Big Bang, and carbon was abundant after 1.5 billion years. We know carbon and other necessary elements were available then by looking at old faraway galaxies. It's estimated that the first intelligent civilizations existed as early as 5 billion years ago. Given the rate of formation and destruction of star systems, the average extraterrestrial civilization has a 1.7 billion year head start on us. In the words of Carl Sagan, we're Johnny come latelys. The second cosmological idea this runs counter to is the Copernican principle. The Copernican principle says we should not expect to hold any privileged position in the universe. Statistically, it's far more likely that we occupy some average or middle position, than hold a special spot like being first. If billions of civilizations are expected to live in this universe, the odds that we're the first would correspondingly be one in billions. Intelligence destroys itself. In a twist of fate, perhaps Fermi's own work provides the very answer to his question. Fermi ushered in the nuclear age, paving the way to technologies that could bring about our destruction. What's more scary, is that nuclear weapons are just the first of many technologies that carry such a burden. We now contend with the risks from biological weapons, AI, nanotechnology, and environmental destruction. Some even fear that modern physics experiments, like particle accelerators pose an existential risk, though this particular threat is low given that higher energy collisions occur naturally. As doomsday technology becomes more broadly available, an ever-increasing number of hands will hover over big red buttons. It is an unstable situation. Even if there's just a 1% chance per year that one of these technologies wipes us out, that means humanity has less than a 5% chance of surviving the next 300 years. If we're not careful, we could spell our own doom. But even if many, or most intelligent species wipe themselves out, it seems unlikely that all of them do. Some should survive to inherit the stars. Quote, a single message from space will show that it is possible to live through technological adolescence. End quote. Carl Sagan Humanity has so far managed to survive perils of our making. It's incumbent on us to keep it that way.